Hi. Hi. How's everybody doing tonight? It's Friday. It's not our usual Thursday. But you know, I've been traveling. So, and I missed you the last two Thursdays. So, I'm here. What y'all, what are y'all doing tonight? Are you working? You lashing? I shouldn't say working, right? Because we don't work. We lash. What are you doing this evening? It's Friday night. It's almost 10 o'clock here. What are you doing? So, I went to the Hollywood Lash Conference last week. Right now, I'm just taking some things outside of the boxes so I can show you what I got. In my little swag bags um but I went to the conference last week it was so awesome it's always awesome when you get to hang out with uh, other lash artists and be in the company of you know people who have knowledge and you know just when you're with like-minded people because you know it's not often that you get to just hang around with lash people and you know that aren't clients you know what I mean so whenever you get a chance to go to a conference go um, Benita La Bella, she's lashing and listening to me. That's so awesome. Hello to your client. Um, but yeah, so whenever you have an, a chance to, um, yeah, to go to conferences and just mingle with other lash artists and network, you should go. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you a few of the things that I got. Sorry, I'm just looking and comparing things. Okay, so let's see. The show, the conference, was coordinated by the Sinful Lashes, and everybody got one of their new palette boxes, right? See? So it's a palette box system. You may or may not have seen this somewhere before, but this is one. This one is from Sinful Lashes. Um, they also gave a heated eyelash curler. See, which we could always do with another one of those, right? Heated eyelash curler. This is actually one of the skinnier ones because the one I have, like this, is the one that I have. So look at how much different. This one looks like a pen, like a marker. Sinful lashes, okay? Uh, let's see what else we got. They also gave some of these pads. Do you guys like these silk iPads? I remember when I first started lashing and I was looking on Amazon for supplies and I would go for these. Personally, not a favorite because they're kind of thin. Like... Let me see. Do, do, do. Hold on, just trying to rip it off. That's kind of why I don't like them. I guess not sinful lashes fault. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, no, kind of can't get it. Mm. Yes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. This is a silk iPad. Really thin. Let's see. Do do. Oh. It's kind of thin, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Then we also got some cleanser and protein remover pads from London Lash Professional. These are like those, uh, they're like round discs you can use to swipe over the lashes. One of these. And they're wet. And it's supposed to be like, you know, you just cleanse the lashes by swiping down and it shouldn't pull any of them out this oh but I 
feel it snagging a little bit. But you know, tis the, uh, oh look, we lost one. Aww. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you lose one? Okay. So, let's see, we also got some adhesive from London Lash Professional. We got some tweezers from Sinful Lashes. And we got a whole bag from Borboletta. Let's see what else they gave us in here. Would you believe that I actually haven't opened this stuff? So, we got iPads for sleeping with. Oh, look. We got two trays of lashes. We got some adhesive. We got some tweezers from Borby. Oh, did you see that? Like I totally put this through and there was no, um, yeah. Okay. Ironically, I went and bought this tweezer from Borby because I hadn't actually looked in my thing and I actually like it. The difference between it and others, if you'll see, it's like a shorter. I don't know if you can really tell that difference, but it is shorter slightly. Might even be angled to, oh look, and it's a taller tweezer. Look, you see, these tweezers look like they're the same. They're not all the same, are they? Look at that, the height is different. They're not all the same. They look the same, but they're not the same. Okay, so yeah, the Hollywood Lash Conference was awesome. I learned a few things, specifically like how to hold my tweezers better. You know, instead of holding them like a pen, you gotta hold them like this. You're gonna use your ring finger to balance. And I always use my pinky as well to balance, right? So no more of this. You gotta start doing like this. This is gonna take some getting used to. Um, yeah, so let's see what else. So then I went to, hi Tanya. Then I went to, Tanya and I just went to dinner, guys. Um. Then I went to Oakland for my very first class. Ooh, popped my cherry. I am officially an educator. Um, awesome time. I had five business students. I wrote a manual like the, a weekend ago. <laughs> I wrote a technique manual and a business manual. Um, just pretty much how to create your own lash business and then manage it. And then the technique manual talks about volume, diameters, lengths, lashes, accessories, um, application procedures, removal procedures, you know, all the good stuff that should be in a manual. Um, but that class was awesome. So we have five new lash business women and three new volume artists in the Oakland area. Um, so also it was hosted by um, Illumina Lashes, who was also at the Hollywood Lash Conference with their own booth. Um, and they really were pushing their green eye gel pads and the tape, which they sold out of. Um, if you guys haven't already shopped with Illumino, try their tape. It's actually kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a bio gel pad in that it doesn't rip the lashes out. It's soft tape. You don't have to detack it on the back of your hand. Well, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. I mean, right? We shouldn't be doing that anyway. Um, but using Illumino's tape, it's easier to remove if you do the tape back method. Um, so yeah, if you shop with Illumino, use my code LASH411 so you can save 10%. They're also coming out with the new um, crane tweezers, that's what they're calling them. They are, um, they are for, they're kind of like the curved L tweezer, but they're lightweight because they're made of Japanese steel. So imagine something even lighter in your hands. Um, uh, my manual's not for sale yet, guys. Unless you're taking a class, you're, it's not for sale. You have to take a class in order to get the Lash 411 manual. Otherwise, just you have the whole website to search for whatever you're looking for. Um, that's right, Cam's mother. You gotta take the class to get the manual. Um, actually, let me show you the manual real quick. Give me one second, because I worked really hard on that. Okay, 
so the business manual is about 37 pages. Let's see. That's everything we're covering in the business manual. Formation, standard operating procedures, website, expenses, marketing, scheduling, accounting, pricing, and location. This is what we, we go over in the business class. So let me show you. Like for example, business formation, right? Coming up with a business name, checking business names. Opening a bank account, registering your business name, policies, right? A tardy policy, a fill policy, Ooh. new client policy, cancellation policy, no show policy, right? This is in the business manual. And then the technique manual, Ooh. this one's about 60 something pages. So this is the technique manual. And in here we go over eyelash theory, lashes, adhesive, tweezers, accessories, styling, technique, application, removal, aftercare, sanitation, and reality. You know, the reality of what the class is or what you're gonna be doing after you take the class. Yeah, cause the truth is uh, you're not going to leave the class like lashing like that, no. You gotta give yourself a chance. But, so here's an example of eyelash theory. When we go over the different eye diseases. All right, let's see. Let me show you the tweezer section. So here we talk about, there's at least 10 plus different types of tweezers out there. Obviously you know how I feel about a curved tweezer for isolation um, and one of the cool things too in our manual is seeing as how I have a lot of posts with video and pictures and further explanations throughout the manual you can just search against the website and find a post a video that has to do with that topic so it's kind of like interactive that way you can use it with the website as well um, you can never have too many accessories, right? Here's an example of the accessories page, right? So that's the manual for technique, right? So we go into technique. You can't rush the Russian. I know you've probably seen that before. Cause I wrote it. Then we go into application and sanitation removal. And then of course, reality. What it's gonna be like following the class. It's probably written backwards because this is a reflection. So, sorry. But, two manuals. So if you take the business and the technique class, you're getting two manuals. If you're just taking one, then you get one manual. You know, so on and so forth. Kind of straightforward, right? Right. Yeah. So those are included with your class. So Las Vegas is coming up. Anybody, you know, I didn't ask you guys where you were calling in from. Just give me your cities and states. Sorry. If you're looking for events or you know of an event, uh, please add it to the website because you know. I'm not just the one end all be all. It's the websites for all of us to add information and to let each other know what's going on. Yeah, let me see where everybody's from. Rhode Island, Detroit, Michigan, San Diego. Sophie, I'll see you in Vegas. I will be in Vegas June 24th to the 26th for the trade show. If you're going to be there um, and want to come on the walking tour, let me know. Excuse me. <laughs> If um, if you want to do a mentorship while we are there at the trade show, you want some one-on-one -on -one time and you need some help, you want me to watch your technique or you want me to explain something to you or show you how to do something with your website, we can do a mentorship session. There's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour sessions. So we could do it right on the trade show floor. Um, I will be at 
um, EBL Lashes, Lash Affair, and Illumina Lashes, their booths for meet and greets. So anybody who wants to come and meet me there, I'm so totally down. Um, I'm also going to be doing a giveaway. So I told you guys about this the last time I saw you, but I've just been waiting to make sure I had all the products from all the sponsors so that I could take pictures and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to be doing, we hit 25,000 followers. So I'm doing a 25K giveaway and I'm going to announce the winners um, around the time of Vegas. And I'm going to be giving away, I think, two of the gift bags. Um, if you don't already know, the Lash 411 workshops you know, these classes that I'm teaching, um, they are sponsored by about nine to 10 different brands, which means each of those brands has donated some of their products for you. Um, so some of our sponsors, if I'm, I'm gonna read them off at the top of my head, um, Borboletta Beauty, um, Lash Affair, EBO Lashes, Lash Exchange, Illumino Lashes, Cosmetics, The Lash Chick Lashes, um, The Lash Wrap, um, Mayrocky is, is sponsoring the Los Angeles one. I think Lash FX is getting on board. Um, Ruthie Bell as well. Um, so all of these brands have donated products for your kits. I gotta tell you, the students, they pretty much had a complete tweezer set. The students that I just had um, at the Oakland class, they were all really grateful for all the products. They were actually kind of surprised because it was just so much product kind of awesome guys like when you open up that bag and you see you have at least I don't know four to five different tweezers um from all these different brands it gives you an opportunity to try different things which is awesome so I'm giving away two of those bags sorry my alarm went off I'm going to be giving away two of those bags um around Las Vegas time so again, I will be in Las Vegas June 24th to the 26th for the trade show. If you're interested in going to the trade show, just click the link in my bio and hit Lash Events. Um, that way you can see what's upcoming in the calendar. I believe this weekend's also premiere in Orlando, Florida. Um, that's June 4th to the 5th. And is anybody going to be going to that? Because I know there's going to be, I think American Eyelash Association is going to be there. Is anybody going to premiere? In Orlando yes no maybe no okay um yeah so next week I go to Atlanta to go teach a class there um, if anybody's interested in participating in business I still got a few spots available um, I might have one spot available left for technique if you are in or around the Atlanta area and you're interested in learning volume or advanced classic let me know um, yeah, and so if you're interested in the class schedule and maybe getting one of these gift bags, um, I'll be in Atlanta Midtown. Um, yeah, Central, Midtown, Midtown, Atlanta. I actually used to live there, and that's actually where I took my first eyelash training. Um, if you need, if you don't already know or you want to see my credentials, just click the link in my bio and hit volume training and you can read all about me who I am what I do what I've done if you don't already know <laughs> um but yeah guys so did anybody have any questions tonight I think somebody asked me about what my favorite glue was all you have to do is click the link in my bio and hit lash 411's favorites to see my favorite glue well I moved well yeah I moved back here she said, and you move back to a snow state. Yeah, a place where they have a, a place where they have four seasons. Yes, I moved back because I needed to practice on all my friends to lash. I didn't have any friends in Atlanta. I had only been there for the year. Um, like, you know, enough girlfriends to get my hands on to practice. So, yeah. Um, I moved back. And I set up shop here. And I'm, I'm really happy that I did because I was able to build a really successful lash business here in New Jersey. So... Yes, I moved back to a snow state. Um, Salty Lash, are you teaching advanced volume? Yes, in uh, New York, August 13th to the 14th, and LA, August 27th to the 28th. If you are interested in a private training and you have your own studio, just shoot me a message. There's one day and two day options available, and you just also have to pay for travel. Um... I wish there were more lash conventions in Canada, specifically in Vancouver. Then create one. <laughs> create your own lash conference. You can do it. Um, 
what do I think about pre-made lashes? You know, sometimes, uh, depends on the pre-made lashes. Some of them are too thick at the bases, but recently I think companies have been getting better. For example, Illumino Lashes and Meraki Lashes both offer pre-made fan options and they're both ex have acceptable or um, sufficient bases that aren't too thick for the natural eyelash. So those two companies are an option. And of course, if you shop with Illumino, use my code LASH411 and you'll get 10% off. Um, so, but you know, sometimes a client comes in, you may not have enough time to do a full set. You never know what they're gonna come walking in with or it's the holidays, it's really busy and you need to fill them quickly. You know, sometimes you can get away with doing half of a set with pre-made lashes. Um, I don't think I would suggest doing a whole set with pre-made lashes, but uh, give it a go, try it. What's the worst that could happen, right? And whatever the worst is, I mean, then you lesson learned, right? Always try it. Always try first. When if when and if I'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina? Well, I don't have plans to be in Charlotte, North Carolina. But again, if you want to schedule a private training, you have your own studio. Um, there's one day and two day options available, and you just pay for travel. Um, do you use both silk and synthetic mink? How do you determine when to use which? I use synthetic mink, but have been thinking of trying silk. They're the same thing. Both milk, mink and silk are both synthetic PVT. There's no such thing as real silk and real mink. I mean, they they call them different things uh, because the look of the synthetic PVT is different. So for example, silk might be a little bit more shinier. It might be a little bit more tapered, whereas mink might be a little bit more matte. Um, but there really isn't a difference other than shine, if you will. Um, they're both made of the same thing. Um, volume class, uh, for just the technique, it's a day and a half. That's 1,250 for business and technique. It's 1,500 for two days. Have I ever created a convention? No, I have not, but it's on my to-do list. Would you guys be interested in coming to a Lash 411 conference slash convention in like the New York tri-state area let me know <laughs> it's on my mind hey sense Brandon <laughs> okay missed what you said about prayer for yeah I will come uh, to teach you if you have your own studio um, cause it's just easier for you to learn in your own setting. So if you have your own studio, we'll exchange some messages. You'll send me some pictures of your studio and we will, um, pick a date and time. If you want to do a one day or two day program, um, I can really teach anything when it comes to classic, advanced classic volume, advanced volume. I'm just not doing group classic classes per se. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested in that, you can fill out an enrollment. If you click on the link in my bio and select uh, volume training and then hit enroll and select private and then I'll contact you from there. If you've already submitted one, I'm going through everything tonight so I'll get to you as soon as possible, okay? I'm taking my lash program next week. What are your biggest tips for new lash artists? Give yourself a chance. Um, you're going to get overwhelmed. Just know that that's normal, okay? You just got to push through that. Um, it's very normal. We've all been through it. It's going to be very frustrating, discouraging. Um, but just know that this could be a great career if you just give yourself the chance. Um, don't get, uh, I would say, get a curved isolation tweezer. That's probably the biggest tool that could be make or break to the beginning of your career because isolating is a bitch. Like when you're not used to holding something in your non-dominant hand like for example if you're right-handed and now you have to hold a tweezer in your left hand and try and isolate itty bitty little lashes get good lighting good magnification and a good isolation tweezer and you should be okay and just the mentality that it's going to be hard at first but that you can overcome it and you'll come out on the other end an awesome lash artist trust me at first I didn't see it for myself, but then I fell in love with lashes, and when you grow that passion, it just gets easier. Trust. Reading through the questions. Do, 
do, do. If you want to know anything about my favorites, oh, should we be playing this drinking game tonight? Because I'm getting the best. There's no such thing as the best anything. There's only preference and, you know, opinion. So please don't ask me what the best is. I mean, there's only one tool that I'll ever say is the best, and that's for isolation. It's the Dumont SS45. That is not, you know, that's not a tool that is specific to any lash brand. It's Dumont. Um, if you want to know my favorites, click the link in the bio and hit Lash 411's favorites. Would I have any idea how to make your own pre-made lashes so they're made in advance before an appointment? Yes. Obviously, you would pre-make the fan, dip it into the glue, and set it somewhere that's sanitary. The only thing about that is that once you place that, once you've picked that lash off off the strip, technically you got to put it right onto the client's face because once it leaves the strip, it's then considered contaminated if you set it anywhere else. So I can't necessarily suggest to you to do that. Um, yeah, so unless you want to just go for some real pre-made lashes versus pre-making your own, you have to understand that if you double dip into the glue on a volume fan, now you're adding more glue, which is adding more weight, okay? Um, the advanced classic's not a real class, as in I'm offering volume beginners. Advanced classic is not really much different other than you're just, yeah, you really are just learning probably some more styling techniques. Um, but that's not a group class that I'm offering. If you want to go over it in a, some kind of private class, we can. But I would say just go right for the volume. To be honest, my, this is just personally what I did. I didn't take an advanced classic course. I did classic for a year and then I went right into volume. I mean, what do you need classic, advanced classic kind of for? But, you know, to each his own. Um... What pillow do I use for lashing? I use a Therapeutica pillow. I would show it to you right now, but I've got shit on it. <laughs> so I would suggest you just click the link in my bio, hit search last 411 and search Therapeutica pillow or just search pillow and there will be search results, but don't press enter. I'm fixing, there's a problem with the permalinks on the website. So when you search a term and you hit enter, it'll then say 404 page error not found. Yeah, I'm getting real geeky right now. Sorry, I'm fixing it. I'm working on it. Developer hat on. Um, I'm working on it. But in the meantime, just wait for the drop down to give you a search result and then click that. When you search the pillow, I gave you price options as well about where you can find them. There's like four different price points for those pillows. Um, how many slots left for your LA training? I think I have three spots left. Um, it's August 27th to the 28th. It's a volume experienced course. And that's actually going to be at May Rocky Lashes at uh, Blossom Beauty Lounge. Have you ever used a zero gravity chair to lash clients in? Yes, but I don't think I used the right one. When I say that, I mean the angle of the client wasn't far back enough for me to comfortably lash them. Um, but I mean, it was comfortable to them. <laughs> wasn't comfortable to me at the moment. Um, have you ever had a client that had to see a doctor from an allergic reaction? It's been a while. Um, yeah, it's been a while and I don't really think that it's, it was so much an allergic reaction. Like I had a client who she had contact dermatitis, but she knew she had it when she came to me and still wanted to get her lashes anyway. And then the next day had to remove them anyway. So yeah. Um, do I use a nebulizer during the application or after? I actually use it after. Um, my humidity in my room is all right. You could use it throughout. Just don't get excessive with it um, because you also don't want to shock the adhesive. So you usually want to wait about two minutes, two to five minutes after you've placed a lash before you start nebulizing or so because the adhesive has already started to cure. Um, when will I have a group beginners volume class in LA? Well, let's see how this experienced group class goes at the end of August in LA, and then we'll take it from there. How about that? Um, good lighting, where can I get a good lamp? Uh, so there are three kinds of lights that lash artists can use. Obviously, Glamcore is like top notch, but it's also like a 250 and up price point. 
but it's also great for mobile lashing and or if you're just moving around and it's on a tripod and it's got two lights and then they have a multimedia one that I have my phone on here. Um, there's that. Then there's that new ring light. It's like this, but bigger. You know what I mean? Um, that's a new light that, that's been hitting the market. And then there are the lights that um, there are LED lights that you could get. And an LED light has it, its advantages because according to my friend Sujin from Illumina Lashes, um, because our because the in our the main ingredient in our glue is cyanoacrylate, which is an acrylic acrylate resin, um, the glam core and because it releases heat off of it, it may cause our adhesive to cure faster. So an LED light is actually a better option. Um, so I mean, I'm pretty sure you could search Amazon. For an LED light it's just that the one if you see the video from the training that I did um, in Oakland recently the lights that she used those are LED lights they're just not portable so if you needed to you know pack up your lights and go those aren't the lights um, but I'm pretty sure you could search Amazon or Google LED lights or portable LED light and look into it um, do I prefer the nebulizer rather than the mister? Yes, I do not nano mist. I nebulize. If you were to hold a nebulizer this close to your eye, you still wouldn't get wet. It releases smaller molecules, smaller water molecules. So the thing about a nano mister is you have to hold it like that far away, right? And if you held it this close, you'd get wet. So imagine then that's like... If you don't wait the right amount of time before using it, you're going to shock cure the adhesive, which then means your lashes aren't going to last as long. Or you're going to cause blooming, which is that white, foggy, gassy look at the base where the adhesive is on the extensions. Yeah, so I nebulize. And a nebulizer is included in all the student kits at a Lash 411 workshop. Yes, I got you all nebulizers. I hook it up, y'all. I hook it up. Um, all right, so it's Friday night. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my evening. I flew in yesterday. Can I tell you guys? I had a full day. I was supposed to have a full day of clients today. And like they all rescheduled. I mean, amen. It's like God parted the Red Sea because I've been away for a whole week and I thought I was going to spend the whole day working on clients, but I at least get the, I had the break today so I could process paperwork and accounting and shit like that, you know, because we wear all these different hats as lash artists. Um, let's see. I'm a beginner classic lash artist and when I'm done with the full set, there is still some spacing, even though I feel like I extended every lash. Any suggestions? Are you only using one length? Or are you using eights and nines in between those longer lengths? If you are just using one length, it's going to look spacey. If you use multiple lengths, at least three to five lengths, then it's going to look fuller and more dynamic and more natural. So use more than three lengths. Um, and plus, your client has more than three lengths of their eyelashes. There's like three growth phases. You right? Right. I mean, they're not all long lashes have i noticed a difference in your client's retention when switching to a nebulizer i've been using a nebulizer for the last three years so will you say hi to my boss toya hi toya <laughs> all right guys i'm outie oh by the way i'm wearing do you guys wear that lip sense stuff? No? Yes? I'll tell you some more about it later. One of my friends put me on. So I'll give you her information, then she can tell you more about it. Okay. Oh no, aesthetics with Rose, you missed the whole thing. Eh. Maybe I'll save it and throw it on YouTube. I still got two other videos to throw up on there. It's just because they're so long. Because we're like together for an hour and then trying to upload a video for an hour. So it's either I try to do that or we go meet each other over on Facebook and then you can watch it back. Are any of you on Facebook? Yes. No. Yes. 
aesthetics with the rose. Okay, I need to throw it up on there. Okay, I'll save it for you. I'll save it. Okay. Hey, Val. Good to see you. YouTube is Lash411, guys. Simple as that. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm outie. Bye.